Hi, my name is Wesley Smith. I'm the product manager for the Studio 192, and I'm going to take you through a few of the functions and features to help you get started. So the Studio 192 has uh, two different modes. Uh, right now, it is uh, just a basic interface. Uh, we don't have the DSP on. And I'm going to just uh, describe some of the routing just to help you get started in your DAW. Right now, we're using Studio One. We'll get through uh, some of the more advanced uh, Studio One features in a little while, but this is true of any DAW application, not just Studio One. On your inputs here, uh, you can see that you have uh, 26 inputs. Uh, you have your eight analog inputs, as well as your uh, SPDIF inputs and your 16 uh, ADAT inputs. Uh, this is at 44.1 and 48. When you go up to 96K or 88.2, your ADAT IO drops down to 8. And then at 192, uh, you just have your 8 um, analog inputs. On your outputs tab, you can see that all of the outputs on your Studio 192 are freely routable. You have your main left right outputs. You have eight independent analog outputs for things like monitor mixes or speaker switching. You also have independent control over your headphones, your phones one, phones two, uh, SPDIF, and of course all your ADAT outputs. Um, you just need to assign it inside your DAW and you're up and running. So now I'm going to switch over to um, Universal Control, uh, UC Surface and we'll show you how that interacts with your DAW application. So here we have universal control and you can see that um, my uh, mixer is bypassed. I'm gonna come over here to my little gear icon and I'm gonna unbypass my mixer. UC Surface acts basically like an analog mixer would in a normal studio. So you have eight returns coming from your DAW application as well as all your inputs and a bunch of mixes being routed to your outputs. At this point in time, Universal Control has um, control over your outputs and uh, the mix is going to those outputs. Uh, your DAW application is just receiving the inputs from uh, UC Surface. Um, we can also go through a few of these little settings here. You have a standalone modes. Uh, your, uh, your Studio 192 can be used either as a preamp with direct outputs or as an A, a to D, D to A device when it's not connected to your computer. This is also where you set your speaker management and whether or not you're using your onboard uh, TalkPak mic or one of your eight analog inputs for TalkPak source. So here we are in Universal Control UC Surface. Uh, this is the method um, by which you cre uh, create all of your monitor mixes. You can see you have all of your inputs here, plus you have your DAW returns. So if I wanted to say route my main mix from Studio One or Logic or Pro Tools uh, to my monitor mix so I could hear it while I'm monitoring, I would just come over here to DAW One and this is where my streams come in. Now if I select this, you can see I have the stereo linked and that's very important because um, by default, these two channels, DAW1 and DAW2, are mono. So if you want to monitor your return from your DAW application in stereo, you need to stereo link those. And uh, now this return is going to sound just like it would if it was being patched directly from your DAW application. You can see also that you have a few other DAW returns here to play with. So if you want to add a click track or do a rough mix of some of the tracks that you've pre-recorded with your um, inputs, you can do that all from here. To create a, a monitor mix, let's say I wanted to create a mix on uh, mix five and six, outputs five and six. I simply select that mix and now I can create the mix that I want on my uh, first ADAT inputs as well as my analog inputs. I have full FAT channel control and this is true for any of these output pairs. You can see over here that speaker switching is enabled on uh, these four outputs. If I come back over to my gear icon, I can turn that off if I don't need speaker switching. And now I have these extra outputs uh, to create mixes, monitor mixes for and send mixes to. My main mix is the same. This goes to main mix left, right. And um, I can create my effects mixes here. And on every single mix, if you scroll all the way to the end, you see that you have your um, 
your FX returns for your reverb and delay. If I want to edit my reverb and delay, I just select it and then I can uh, click, click on effects edit, change my effects type, um, open up presets, create new presets from any of um, these settings and load anything that I've created previously. When I go to the main mix, <clears throat> if I select on this main mix fader, this is um, where all I have, I have some output controls for my main functions. I have uh, main mix mono, main dim, uh, these mirror the functions that are on the front panel of your Studio 192. I can um, route any of my mixes to my SPDIF outputs and any of my mixes to my headphone outputs. Because when you're working in UC Surface, you most likely have a DAW um, application open and you're managing two different applications at the same time. Uh, UC Surface streamlines some of the functions, so your headphones are not freely routable um, inside of UC Surface. They mimic one of the other outputs. Same thing with your uh, SPDIF outputs. Again, if I go over to my gear icon and I bypass the mixer, now I can route to my headphones and my SPDIF outputs for straight from uh, my DAW application. But let's go ahead and leave this enabled. Now I'm going to switch over to Studio One and I'm going to show you how to set up cue mixes directly from Studio One. Inside of Studio One we've uh, created some advanced monitor mix functions that allow you to control the preamps as well as your fat channel uh, plug-in on the running on the DSP and create uh, near zero latency monitor mixes all from Studio One without UC Surface being um, running. It does need to be running in the background. Um, I'm going to show you what it happens here. Um, let me click over. So back here in Studio One, uh, or so excuse me, in UC Surface, you see I can still create monitor mixes from UC Surface. Now if I come over here to Studio One, and I clicked on, click on my I.O. You can see right here, these are uh, my QMix outputs. When I enable one of these outputs or all of these outputs for QMixing, now Studio One takes control over UC Surface. And you can go back over here and see that your mixer is bypassed. Now I can close this window and I just leave universal control running in the background and let Studio One do all the heavy lifting at this point in time. So when I create an audio track here, if I create a track <laughs> that is on one of my uh, analog outputs and I click OK, you can see here that I have all of my preamp controls, my phantom power, uh, phase invert, as well as my preamp level. And I just need to click it. I can either enter a value or I can use my scroll wheel on my mouse to dial in just the right gain setting. This also mirrors exactly what I'm doing on the front panel of my Studio 192. If I expand out the channel here, you see this nice blue fat channel. This blue fat channel is inserted on any channel on the Studio 192 that has DSP processing. Uh, this is input one, so it does have fat channel processing. I can click, um, double click on it, and now I have my EQ settings, my compressor setting, and all this is happening on the DSP of the uh, Studio 192. So it's all happening at near, near zero latency. The only latency you're getting is just from your analog to digital conversion. Uh, this button here allows you to print the uh, fat channel processing. So if you like what you're hearing in your headphones and you want to print that to your audio recording, you can do that just by uh, clicking that button. If you want a little more flexibility, you can leave this uh, as non-destructive, so you're hearing it, but you're not actually recording it. And then come back over here, and now I can drag this DSP plugin into my uh, regular plugin insert point of uh, Studio One. And now this plugin is running natively on my computer. But you can see this button here. This is the link to DSP button. You can see that that's engaged. So I'm going to pin this here and open up this guy and pin that as well. So this blue plugin, uh, this is my onboard DSP. This uh, gray plugin, this is running on my computer, but you can see whatever I do in one happens in the other. The other advantage of doing it this way is that if I'm punching in, what I hear when I'm recording is exactly what I'm hearing when I'm playing back. 
down here, you can see these are the uh, key mix outputs that I created earlier. Uh, this is my level control. This lock function locks these levels right to my main mix level. And then all I need to do to unlock it is simply move the control. By hitting the Z, now I'm monitoring straight off the DSP of the um, Studio 192. And that's how I hear this fat channel. So you want to make sure that this Z mix is engaged. You also have pan control right here below the fader. And <coughs> you're all ready to set up mixes in your headphones. Now, if you don't want to have to uh, create this from scratch every time, we do have a template inside of Studio One. Simply create the Studio 192 template, click OK. And now it loads, and you can see that I have all of my uh, analog inputs and my digital inputs set up. All of my um, Z mixes, my Q mixes are set up here. I also have a reverb and delay bus. Uh, configured with room delay and beat delay already loaded in. Because reverbs and delays aren't so prone to uh, latency problems uh, like compressors and EQs and other filters are, um, you can go ahead and use your favorite reverb and delay plugins inside of Studio One. Uh, the reverb and delay that runs on the DSP of your Studio 192 is only available from UC Surface. So that's the Studio 192. Uh, I hope this tutorial helps you get started a little more quickly with your Studio 192, UC Surface, and Studio One, or your favorite DAW application. Uh, if you need more information, you can visit mypersonas.com. There you'll find other videos as well as your user manual and some other helpful hints and tricks. And of course, you can always get help on the Personas user forum. Thank you very much.